Hi guys, it is a gray gloomy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the paradise <clears throat> of Inverness, Florida. You're looking out over just one of the many views from my new little bivouac uh, to survive the collapse here in Florida uh, here on this uh, little bit gray but still beautiful Tuesday morning, February 18th, 2020. And my name is Sam Mitchell and this is Collapse Chronicles where what I do every day before getting out and enjoying it while I still can is uh, bring you, bringing you today's chronicle of the collapse. And before I dive into that, I just want to put out a big thank you to uh, kind-hearted listener Brother Roger for his uh, kind donation to what I do here on YouTube, whatever that is, and anyone who has ever found it uh, in their hearts to support what I do. I really, really do appreciate it, guys. And I also just want to let you know that I am going to be here uh, through February 28th. So anyone who wants a beautiful free campsite here in paradise, uh, I would absolutely love to have you come down and visit and we can have a margarita, a sunset margarita to celebrate the collapse as we get out there and enjoy and enjoy it while we still can which is going to bring you in, I'm going to do, I'm going to mention two uh, stories, and I'm sorry, I cannot remember. I lose track of, uh, of you guys sending me all of this doom and gloom. Uh, keep those cards and letters coming. So HuffPost is uh, weighing in on how, what are we going to do from this point forward, and this is Huff, this is a guest columnist, I guess he's a freelance uh, writer named Barry Ruger, and this is what he and his wife are going to do uh, as the collapse unfolds here in the 21st century. They're doing pretty much what I am doing. This is titled, uh, It's Too Late! for us to fight climate change. Instead, here's how we will spend our lives. My wife and I will leave it to someone else to try and avoid disaster. We've decided that as long as they can postpone the collapse until we're dead, we'll be okay. There you go. So this is the latest uh, posting in a HuffPost series called What Will Be Lost is a series of reported stories and essays exploring the ways climate change is affecting our relationship to one another, to our sense of place, and to ourselves. And, uh, okay, so take it away, Barry Ruger, and talking, tell us about enjoying it while you still can. <clears throat> Last year was, was when the endless bushfires in Australia, well, I think they ended, Barry, with a 15-inch deluge, uh, Put them out. Anyway, last year was when the endless bushfires in Australia convinced me and my wife Susan that climate change was, or is, unstoppable. It is also when we realize that we likely will avoid seeing the worst of the climate emergency at 64 and 74 years of age, my wife and I believe there's a good chance that we will be gone before coastal cities are flooded, the ice caps have melted, and the planet descends into a Mad Max dystopia. We would like to think that this is not what the future has in store, 
but the intransigence of almost all governments to actually slow carbon emissions leaves little doubt that things are unlikely to turn around. They are anybody at this point believing for one second that things are going to turn around uh, to turn this freight train around. Yeah, right. <clears throat> One of the things that age, and I'm 60, by the way, guys. I, I just turned 60, and I'm also hoping I can get out of here just before the screen door hits me on my guilty ass on the way out. And I am so glad I got a vasectomy at age 22. Don't know if Barry and Susan are breeders or not. One of the things that give that age gives you is a sense of history, a feeling that you've seen patterns repeat and that you can see where things are heading in the near future. Over and over again, we have seen corporations and governments ignore the people they should protect in order to line their own pockets. What has changed now is that they are sacrificing an entire planet instead of a town or a country. I would like to believe that the younger people marching with Greta Thunberg could change that, but honestly, I cannot see that happening. My wife and I are at the age when we are preparing for retirement as much as possible. Instead of just staying in our home in Vancouver, we're thinking about where we can move that will insulate us from the climate emergencies that are surely coming. And I'm a little unclear. I thought Vancouver was a pretty good place. That British Columbia, uh... Anyway, I guess that they are not satisfied with staying in Vancouver. So we're thinking about where we can move that will insulate us from the climate emergencies that are surely coming. We would like to move to a place in the country and grow tomatoes and grapes and surround ourselves with the things that will make us safe and comfortable while the world burns around us. We will grow old gracefully, and we will leave it to someone else to try and avoid disaster. At this point, we've decided that as long as they can postpone the collapse until we are dead, we will be okay. We will choose a home in a place that will stay reasonably cool and that should avoid tsunamis and tornadoes. We are exercising and eating carefully so that we can stay healthy to avoid a collapsing healthcare system. We'll invest in things like solar energy because it will protect us from failures of the infrastructure that powers our home, not because we hope to reduce emissions. And to some degree, we will welcome friends who are forced to leave their homes when they are underwater or who are burned out of their properties. It is now part of our plan for climate disaster to accept that our home will become a place of refuge for some of these people. What frustrates us is that we're part of the generation that saw all of this coming. During the 60s and 70s, the governments that we elected more or less invented municipal recycling. And in the 80s, many of us began carrying reusable shopping bags. We lived through the introduction of stringent pollution controls, and many of us chose to replace our furnaces, water heaters, and appliances with newer, more expensive low energy models. Like many people, we have tried to move to a more plant-based diet and one that avoids chemical additives and fertilizers, and we're driving the market for electric cars. 
we should feel virtuous, but it has become obvious that all of these actions are a drop in the bucket. Again, he does not mention whether he is a breeder. If the powerful people who could significantly reduce carbon emissions at the stroke of a pen won't act to save us, are we wasting our time? I think that both Susan and I struggle some days to see a positive future for our planet, but we also know that we are taking steps to make our own immediate future as bright and safe as we can. Perhaps the practical solution to our climate emergency is not to wait for politicians to shut down the fossil fuel industry. Hmm. Instead, each of us can create our own local community and try our best to prepare for the inevitable dark days. We're hoping to build a safe, sustainable place to live out our last few decades and to make it a place where art and music and literature play a certain role in our lives. We've always been urban dwellers, so we're as surprised as any that we might adopt the old 60s back to the land philosophies. The difference now aside from pending disaster, is that things like cheap solar power and the internet make that a lot more practical and palatable. Whether we are leading by example or just running away from the inevitable can be debated, but this is how we will be taking back control of our lives Meanwhile, as I watch the sea levels rise and Australia burn, I can't help remember the words of the old American spiritual, Mary, don't you weep. God gave Noah the rainbow sign, no more water, the fire, next time. So Barry Ruger is a North Vancouver-based writer. He is seeking, good luck, honest politicians, justice and honor, intelligence and humor, and corporate integrity. And the final sentence is what shocked me. He plans to move to France. Plans to move to France? He lives in British Columbia, and he's moving to France. Uh, anyway, I need to get this man on the phone. And so uh, I get this story, and somebody else, who was it, like right next to this story that I just read in my email, I have this one from, of all places, Breitbart. Breitbart. You don't hear much of Breitbart on Collapse Chronicles, but who knows? Even Breitbart uh, is talking about this. So while this guy, he and his wife are moving from Vancouver to France to escape the collapse of global industrial civilization in the Mad Max future, we have this story from Breitbart. 65% of French people believe French civilization will collapse. There you go. A survey released by polling firm IFOP has claimed that more than 6 in 10 French people think that French civilization as we know it will collapse. Uh, the survey noted that the survey noted that a third of the people who believed in the collapse think it will occur in a brutal fashion and put the time frame for the collapse within the next 20 years or so. One of the chief reasons stated by respondents as the prime cause of a potential collapse is climate change, 
with 27% stating that climate factors and overconsumption will spell the end of French civilization. French media outlets, <clears throat> which I cannot pronounce, reports. Around 15% of the respondents said that mass migration would be the cause of the collapse, while another 14% stated that internal conflicts within French society or even civil war in France could precipitate it. <clears throat> Many have warned of a potential civil war in France, including, radical, including le leading radical Islam scholar Gilles Kepel, who stated that the jihadi generation had a goal to destroy Europe in a civil war and rebuild an Islamic society in the aftermath. Remember, this is Breitbart. Uh, now it's starting to sound like Breitbart. Uh, in 2017, Belgian historian David Ingalls made a similar prediction saying that, quote, in 20 to 30 years, so we're talking in the 2040s, uh, <clears throat> in 20 to 30 years, Europe will have become an authoritarian or imperial state <coughs> after a phase resembling civil war and decay. I expect a civil war which will force a fundamental social and political reformation in Europe, whether we like it or not. Following the example of the decaying Roman Republic in the first century BC, so he's calling for that uh, within the next 30 years. Mass migration is often termed in France as the Great Replacement, a term coined by prolific French writer Renaud Camus, and a poll released in February of last year suggests that up to a quarter of French people believe in that theory. Camus explained this theory of replacementism to Breitbart London in late 2018, describing it as people, quote, <clears throat> being treated by managerial politics like an object, a simple product, a product, a producer, and a consumer all at once, a thing, a number, not a human being, close quote. So, uh, there you go. Uh, you have heard it directly from Breitbart. I guess uh, <coughs> HuffPost reader Barry Ruger is not a reader of Breitbart. I, I never thought, guys, that I would be doing a, uh, a two-part uh Chronicle of the Collapse going from HuffPost to Breitbart. You never know. Collapse does make strange bedfellows. But anyway, I have got to wrap up today's Chronicle of the Collapse because I think some rain is starting to blow in. So uh, if you did enjoy what HuffPost and Breitbart had to share with you today, please spend a few seconds to thumb up this video. If you did not like what HuffPost, what the lefties and the righties had to tell you, spend a few seconds to thumb it down. And while you're over there doing that, by all means, please sub uh, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles for more of this fun and games. And by all means, guys, if you are anywhere near Inverness, Florida, in the next uh, 10 days, I would absolutely love you to drop by and 
meet up with me here and uh, you can have a beautiful place to camp and we will all enjoy a margarita for the collapse. Bye guys.